All right, welcome everyone. We are here at the 2022 IPF Classic World Championships in Sun City, South Africa. My name is Aaron Kamesi. I'm obviously a coach here at the Strength Guys. I'm here with one of my athletes, Jonathan Garcia, who's going to be competing here in the championship. Jonathan, how are you feeling? Feeling pretty good. All right, so we're going to get we're going to get right into it. Jonathan has been working with me for about five years now. So the first question we have for you is, how would you describe your experience training together with me throughout these years? Um. Before Arian, I was just kind of doing things on my own, so definitely getting a coach, someone I trusted, was a really big thing for me. And serendipitously, we kind of ran into each other and, and got along and hit it off. Um, so yeah, and just giving me that structure and laying out game plans a little bit better, and then obviously handling at the meet, uh, that, that goes a long way. Yeah, it was, it was definitely like a coincidence. You happened to come do my meet January 2017, uh -huh. and you ended up winning Best Lifter, but you left before we gave the award. So yeah. I had to email you and be like, hey, what's your what's your address? I could send you this Best Lifter award. Yeah. And then we ran into together to get into each other at the 2017 Nationals. And you're like, hey, can you help me out on the warm room? <laughs> it's like, all right, I'll help you out. I'll help you out with your game plan. And I believe you got like the bronze medal at that so. one in 2017. So, yeah. And since then, we've just been continuing to build that total. I think you did like a 622.5 kilo total that one. And now you're all up to 697. You're getting the silver medal a couple of times and finally breaking through, getting that gold medal. Finally, yeah. and now we're finally here at World Championship. <laughs> so here. it's been qu quite a five years. Um, moving on, how do you feel like this meet preparation was different than some of the other ones we've done over the years? I think with. Um nationals being so close to worlds it was the best thing for me because you know i work seven days a week sometimes so it's it i was already kind of in meat prep mode as far as diet and training and mindset and then just i didn't get away from that like normal life happened and i got back to my heavy weight again i stood kind of focused and it literally just feels like one big meat and i think that helped a lot going into this one weight cut's been not a problem whatsoever so i feel great and I'm, weight's on point so I'm excited yeah it's definitely there's like pros and cons to it being yeah. like two months uh, separation yeah. some people thought like oh I gotta turn around and compete again uh. in two months but then it's like man you're already in meat mode mm -hmm. you're gonna keep your body weight down you go right back to the heavy training and then you just knock out the other meat rather yeah. than going to off season yeah. and kind of laying and then getting the weight to go up kind of like with COVID and everything kind of sucked because you didn't know what was the plan. Is Nationals going to happen? Is Worlds going to happen? Mm -hmm. Where is it going to be? When's it going to be? Exactly. And so you're just like constantly off-season training, body weight's going no, up, no, and you're yeah. not as motivated. Where this time it's like motivation right yeah. from the beginning all the way through. Yeah. Um, some of the other things I wanted you to mention is like changes to your training as far as like equipment and those kind of things that you've done for this meet compared to previous meets. Changes in equipment? Yeah, like the equipment you've been using to train. Weights, bars, those kind of things. Oh, like every yeah, little so, thing oh, you've been yeah, doing. Yeah, so yeah, I ended up buying some calibrated plates because I've always trained in pounds just because that's what I had access to. So I went ahead and got some calibrated plates so there was no difference of what the bar felt like with the weight between the home gym and then, and then obviously the meet. And I did buy an Alico bar. After that nationals, I just fell in love with how that bar felt, and I was like, "All right, I got to get one of these." And so I have the Alico bar at home. That um, it's exactly what I'm going to be lifting on here in the competition with the same weights, calibrated weights. I'm going to be lifting on. So it's very much the same thing I get at the meet and an everyday experience at the house. So I'm very yeah. excited about that. Yes, yeah, like those, like they're small changes, but they make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Like going from like you know crappy commercial gym bar and pound plates and like a squishy bench or whatever mm -hmm. like that and then maybe you don't have access to chalk and everything like that then you go to like oh let me get the Lico bar let me get the calibrated plates mm -hmm. let me get a nice rogue bench and try and mimic the competition as best as possible because mm -hmm. when you want to be that elite level all those little things make that big difference so yeah, yeah I remember at nationals you're like man I gotta get this gotta bar get <laughs> especially for deadlift with the grip issues like important mm -hmm. to train with that same exact bar mm -hmm. that's gonna be used mm -hmm. yeah and then and the grips have been improving exponentially since training on that bar um, finding just what works for me and you know my smaller hands and what what's it where placement and all that so it just it, it feels just like at the meet day at home so I can't beat that yeah and especially just being the the first world championship we've never had the opportunity um, whether it was we didn't get the invite or you know with COVID and everything like that so mm -hmm. this is the first chance the first international travel for powerlifting and so you want to get like everything down everything just right just right and try and make it as easy as possible exactly and then the final question is like, what is one thing that you've learned from our five years of working together? Um, the importance of prep and the importance of strategy. Um, very much so previously, like in my Olympic days, it's very much just like lift what you can. And then for a long time transitioning to powerlifting, I didn't have a specific program I was on or a specific coaching team to help me out like I have now. This is very much just 
writing my own workouts and beating myself up as much as I could, thinking that that was the best way. But what I've learned with, with y'all's help is definitely to, uh, when to let my foot off the gas a little bit and then just be fully rested and recovered so meet day we can perform the best that we can. So It's definitely an important factor. Like A lot of people think, like, oh, the off-season training is important. But it is important. You can do everything right. Mm -hmm. And if you screw up those last few weeks, mm -hmm. then you don't get to see the results. Exactly. You don't peak too right, you're too fatigued, or you're cutting weight too hard, mm -hmm. then you don't get to see all that progress you've made. So like those last few weeks, you got to really hone everything down I think, yeah. and manage the fatigue and everything like that. Yep. And like you have the experience of weightlifting. Weightlifting is obviously a lot more skill and technique. So powerlifting isn't as much of that. But then the meat day strategy comes a little bit more into play because now you have three lifts instead three of two lifts. lifts. Yeah. And so now you can build your total throughout the entire day across all those nine attempts versus weightlifting. You have the six attempts. And obviously we have the round system versus the rising bar. Mm -hmm. So then the strategy is a little bit different. A little bit different. And so that becomes an important factor as well. The person yeah. who's the strongest isn't always a person who wins on the day. Exactly. The person who has the best strategy and executes wins on the day. Exactly. So thanks a lot for listening into this and we'll hope to see Jonathan later today at the 66 kilo primetime session at IPF Classic Worlds where he's going to break some world records along the way.